Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, I, I guess we're right in the middle, if you will, of the whole issue of uh, the campaigns. And uh, and I know that a number of you are sort of watching the campaign. We've just recently gone through the, the whole issue of the uh, the Republican convention, and now the Democratic convention is going to be coming up, and we'll probably do something at, at a later date. But what we're going to do is that there's, uh, there's all sorts of politics going on at this point in time. But what we're going to do is that uh, I had the opportunity, if you will, to interview former Governor Vic Atiyah. Uh, and it was quite an interview. And so I thought I would share this interview with you. It's about 45 minutes long, but um, you'll see why uh, I'm giving you the opportunity to see this interview. Uh, this, this is a beautiful interview. So I want you to sit back and let's look at this interview and then join me to, to make comments about the interview or whatever. Uh, two friends, very dear friends of mine, Dale and Sarah Seal. And uh, his daughter's out there in the audience, but anyway, but they're here with me today, and they are, both are, happen to be Republicans, and are very active in the Republican Party, and uh, and so they're going to be giving us some comments right after that. Okay, so again, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having us. Okay, good. Mr. Broussard, your host today, and today uh, I have with me today uh, a sort of a historian, if you will, from Oregon. And uh, in in uh, former governor Vic Atiyah, the last reigning Republican governor for the state of Oregon. I mean, and so what we're going to do today with the governor is that uh, we're going to give him the opportunity, if you will, to reflect over his 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 history, if you will. We're going to take advantage of the opportunity to give someone who has been. Uh, a faithful servant, uh, a, a husband, a father, uh, I mean, just just a number of things. So this is it's sort of like a, a, a living memoir, memoir and, uh, and something that hopefully we can re retain, and in fact, even to the point that maybe we might be able to give this piece to the Oregon Historical Society as a, as a way of, yeah. of, of sharing with you, Will, someone that has a lot of credibility, a lot of respect here uh, in the state of Oregon, and someone I've I've known for a number of years, uh, someone in all due respect, that have sort of uh, fathered me in this whole issue of politics, and I, and I think about that, and I thank him for that many times over. In fact, the last time I, I'll make a point, and then we're going to get right into the interview. Typically, I'm I'm always done talking, but but the bottom line, I can still remember the time that uh, I got involved, and and uh, and the governor uh, was sort of directed me and, and introduced me to Cecil Edwards because at that point in time. The Oregon Voters Digest was um, uh, was sort of like sitting on the shelf, and and uh, I was at the Portland Observer newspaper, mm -hmm. and I and my my wife and I owned the Portland Observer newspaper, and the owner of the Voters Digest uh, just so happened was doing the his printing with us, and uh, and so he was getting ready to go out go out of business, and I and, and and so anyway he approached me in terms of whether or not I might be able to continue the legacy of the Oregon Voters Digest. And that's when, in all due respect, uh, uh, I met Cecil Edwards, and then, and then at the same time I, I met the governor at that point in time, and and, uh, and then from there, in all due respect, I got involved in that whole piece. And but anyway, I can go on and on and on. But there are a number of things and a number of events that that, that I could go on and talk about the governor and and uh, and then the involvement of my life and whatever. So I want to be able to say to you, uh, Oregonians of past and of present. Uh, they, they give you an opportunity to get a better feel of, of who the governor was and, and, and how he got involved in politics, but, but what, what he felt about Oregon and, and, uh, and youth and, and, uh, and the diversity of, this, of the state that we have here in Oregon. Uh, so this is going to be just great, and, and hopefully at some point in time we might be able to consider sharing this with, um, with Oregon through the Oregon Historic Society or, or wherever, if you will. So this is an interview with... Uh, uh, with someone that, that Oregon respected, uh, credibility, and someone I respect, and, and let's go on in with the interview. So thank you very much, and please sit back and reflect, and hopefully share this with uh, uh, with other individuals, especially young people, okay? 
All right, with that, Governor, how you doing? I'm doing well. well you know, well. I, I talk about the longevity of our acquaintanceship. Yes. And while you were talking, I noticed that when I first knew you, you had more hair and it was it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing. You got more than me, though. Same thing yeah. with me. <laughs> Now, we've known each other a long time. Yes, we have. Yes, yeah. we have. And in fact, um, let's start off that way. And this is, uh, how did you, is this, was Oregon your home? I mean, is this, is, yeah. were you born and raised here? I was born and raised here. Uh, I have twin brothers, okay. they're older than I am. Uh, not much, but older. Uh, we grew up on the south of Holiday Street, which is over by the Lloyd Center. <coughs> Today, uh, my home is a parking lot and a max stop over, over there on the east side. Went to uh, Holly School, which is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Went to Washington High School and it's closed. But I've said the University of Oregon is safe for a while. I don't think they're <laughs> going to go out of business. Um, spent two years in Oregon. Two years. Grew up in the family business. Uh, and That's the road business, right? And it's still going right now, right? It's still going. Now it's. It's 112 years old. 112, Atia Brothers. Atia Brothers. Wow, yeah. wow. It's wonderful. In fact, we just happen to be sitting on top of it, as far as the home office is. The yeah, office used here. to be here. Though. The office used to be here. Yeah. And, well, it's still going, and it's still, it's still family. Yeah, okay. It's not sold, and I'm pretty pleased about that. My brothers and I, of course, went in the business. I'm not sure my dad was convinced that I was going to go into business. I was always arguing with him, but um, the way it worked out was that he, he passed away when my brothers were overseas. They were in the infantry. They took Battle of the Bulge, were taken prisoners. Uh, anyway, uh, the three of us spent our lives in the business. That's pretty good. We'd argue, of course, but uh, uh, highly uh, affectionate to each other. And now that we're this age, uh, you know, you begin to walk at the end of the trail, you from very yeah. far away. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, yes, I was born and raised here. Born My dad raised. came here, and here we need the United States. And I'm not exactly what country, sure what, what I country? think. 1901 or 1901 or something, something like that. Wow. And he came. My uncle came first, so he would have been a couple of years before. From where? That. What, what country? And anyway, it's it's it, to me it's a history of the son of an immigrant mm -hmm. becomes a governor. So uh, I, I think that that's sensational. Yes. Uh, it's just wonderful. Well, I don't know where else in the world I can be. And maybe I can get another soapbox, and I have it, to have your listeners think about this. Yes. Is there anywhere in the world that people in the world want to leave, let's say, from France, they want to, they want to immigrate to Saudi Arabia to become a citizen? Or people from Japan want to go to China. Very, they want to become citizens. America is the only country in the world where people in the world want to come to the United States. There's no other. They want to come here. Why? Because here is better than there. And so I get kind of angry when people take it so flippantly that what we have here. Young people have hardly any understanding about the beauty and the marvel of what we have in the United States. Why do you think that's so? You think maybe the lack of early education that's, and well, the uh, school system? Whole, I think a whole lot of things. Uh, okay. Uh, when I say a whole lot of things, uh, TV doesn't help. TV doesn't. It doesn't help. Okay. You, you, on the TV, you've got it blow up things and jump in bed or shoot mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's a popular point, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Uh, everything seems to speed up with them and they had their um, their wishes were everything, you know, instant. Instant. Uh, you want something, okay, you can have it. 
and I see them, you know, they tell me, we're going to take the power to the people. I said, they don't understand. People have the power. That's what this country is all about. And they don't, so that means they don't understand this country. And I think, uh, well, I have to say our governments, city, county, state, national, too many of those people, when they get elected, are, are running again for re-election, so they're voting according to how is this going to help my re-election. Oh, that would take three hours of this conversation. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever you want. There's a lot of things happening. Yes. Right, it's it's right. not as simple. Not as simple at this point in time. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about, uh, well, first off, let's, let, let's recognize uh, your, 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 your most precious, your, your wife. Yeah. Check her by a bit. We're still married. It's 68 years. Yes. Which to me says how, how patient she is. She had to be with the life with me. I mean, well, I mean, we don't yell at each other and we're helpful with each other, but you know, I'm out campaigning or yes. do Boy Scouting or whatever. And, um, and we're getting older now, so the effects of age are taking over. I, I get a kick. I told my wife the other day, there's so many ads on television uh, to make you he healthier, your cholesterol or whatever. Right. And all that does is let you live longer so you can hurt longer. You know, all all the, these pains that you get when you get old makes you live so you can get dirty. I don't know. It's, it's still marvelous because I had, I had open heart surgery now uh, five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. My father died uh, in angina. Uh, he was 62. And I'm saying if he'd lived my, in my age, he'd have had another 20 years or more of life. So it's, it's just, uh, you can't really complain Today, too much yes. about that. Everybody, everybody wants to live a little bit longer. I mean, yeah. not that the medical profession wants you to live a little yeah. bit better from, from an economic standpoint. I will tell you, Bruce, what, among the reasons I feel so keenly about this country, besides what I told you earlier, mm -hmm. where the son of an immigrant could do that, my dad, when he died, there was an editorial in the Oregonian about him. And at that time, I said, you know, what a country this is. Here this man comes from another country to America and establishes a business is recognized by the community with the editorial. Isn't that great? I said, that's just, that, it's just marvelous to think that that can happen. And I remember that is affecting me quite a bit. Thinking how strong and how wonderful it can be. But these are immigrants. And there's children, me. But as you go down the line and have less and less knowledge of what happened, less and less keenness about the market. Anyway, I've got a lot of soapboxes. Too many. No problem. Now, what country was it? Syria. Syria. Yeah. Syria. Okay. Syria. How was it in Syria? Also in because Syria now is in the news, and, and Damascus is in the, was the southern part of Syria. Uh, Homs, H-O-M-S, is in north of Damascus, and our village is very close to Homs, and it's a village. And there was a lot of fighting that went on at Homs, and then a little further north in Aleppo. People ask me about that. I talked with my cousin's wife, who lives in, in what they call the family home, and Omar, Presently, and she came. She came here. Her, most of her family is in Pennsylvania, but she has a son here. Mm -hmm. His name is Victor. Victor too. Yeah, and I told him for crying out loud, pay your bills. His name is Victor Atia. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had a chance to talk with her not too long ago, and I've talked to others. 
Now, I, I, I'm not going to say that they represent the majority, but I think so. I've yet to talk to anybody who is not in support of the government. Mm -hmm. Now, you read the newspapers, and, and you, the only ones who get any attention are the rebels. And they've got a good system of getting news out. They saw that it's not doing the same, and so all the news says how bad the Assad government is. Whether that's right or wrong, I have yet to talk to anybody that uh, doesn't support the current administration. I have been to Syria. I've been to my family home. I talked with the current president Assad with his father three times when I was, each time I would go. And it's not America, but there isn't any other America or people who want to go there. And I don't know why we have to believe that every country has to be precisely like us. I just presume there was internal security, but there's no evidence over evidence of it to me as a visitor. I went to Iraq after they fought with Iran and before Kuwait. And there I could tell that I could really tell there's the internal security. I mean, that was really something. So, as I say, it's not like America, but it's not cruel, it's not bad, it's not. It's a good country. So I, I really don't know. I think maybe, let me give you my thought. Some of you, what do you think, Vic? Well, I look at uh, Egypt, and they're still fighting as to who's going to run the government. They may elect it, but they're still fighting about that. Iraq is still fighting after they took both. So they got rid of the leaders, but then all these other sectarian units, they're all fighting for, for position. So you have an unstable country. Now I don't mean stability or cruelty, which would be Iraq, really. Now they're the ones that really were uh, no good folks. But I would tell you also that President Assad, that's the father, did, hated it, Hussein. I mean, next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. they, 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 between them, they were. And the, Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Well, that's good. Let's come back here. Let's say, for instance, and as you were growing up and whatever, what were some of the things that you were that you appreciated doing the during those early days, if you will? And I maybe I'd say first time appreciated more as I grew older, and I'm talking about mother. Yeah. And I look back and think about mother, and I really think I her, appreciate her very much. Our lives. My two brothers and myself, was, we went through the Depression. I was born in 23, so those years I was old enough to recognize what was going on. We lived uh, right near what we call Sullivan's Gulch, which is 84 now, so you have the rails there and a highway. And so that's where Sullivan's Gulch, people are living in paper shacks. They'd come to the door. But they would always say they wanted to work for something, for lunch. I'll work, I'll do something. They didn't want to say, give me lunch. They say, I want to work for something. Mm -hmm. So even when they were dire straits, they were proud enough to say, just give it without doing anything. I don't remember that happening. Uh, but we, as young people, just kind of moved along. Our parents made sure we, we ate enough. I, I smiled. Mother was a good cook. She was a good cook? Good cook. Oh, she, she cooked this Arabic food. Not all the time, because it takes a long time to do it. But I remember Mother would spend a whole day in the kitchen making bread and making all the different uh, uh, Arabic food. And uh, we, we always sit down at dinner, always. My father, my two brothers, myself, my mother, and we just like that, like a vacuum cleaner after she worked all day. 
fixing the food. But she she loved uh, us kids. And you know, I, I don't know if she would be taking them for for abusing us because spanking was that was legit when I was doing my time. In those yeah. Days. yeah, yes. And mother's mother's weapon of of choice was the hairbrush. Yes. <laughs> and she made us go get it. <laughs> That's even worse. That was even worse. But uh, anyway, we, we were lucky. Mm -hmm. You look back, and then you know you're lucky. Mm -hmm. And we went through school. One thing I, again, looking back, am so pleased with. In all this school, we were really a mix. Arab, Italian, Jap Japanese, blacks. Really a mix going to school. So as I've come through life, all of what I just told you didn't make any I'm not making a distinction. Right, right, right. I mean, we were buddies, we played ball together, we would fight, we would, you know, all these right, things. Right, right. And, and so I had no hurdle to get over mm -hmm. other people. I mean, not had that experience of living with. I, I saw it. I, I ran into something a while ago. If we were all blind, mm -hmm. we wouldn't know who to hate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that, you know, that people have those. And I, anyway, it was a, a good childhood, I'd say. I, they took good care of us, mother and dad. And as I told you, we went to holiday school, Washington High School. And, um, then a couple of years, I, I, I had two years in Oregon with my brothers and in the war. They went back and finished. I didn't. I was married, I was in the business. Mother said, to, maybe my wife said, you ought to go back and finish. Finally I said, honey, the only reason I want to go back is to play football. You want to answer phone? You want to answer? You want to, you I want play to football. Okay. And Answer the phone for a minute. Let's cut it off for a second. Yeah. Mr. Miles here. Yeah. Denny and Jerry on Monday the 10th of September, 11.30 your office, then I'll oh, have lunch. Oh, good deal. So she's going to come in her car because I'm going to do some stuff with my sister afterwards, but uh, she said she would be delighted and is just delighted to be asked and we'll be there. I'll see you then. All right, boss. That's good news. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Denny's still in the this is Denny. Uh, when he's talking, uh, that's Denny, he was my president. Yes, oh yeah, no Denny. And Jerry was my chief of staff. Yes, remember both of them. Lunch. Yes, very much so. That's good, I'm glad they're going to be coming up. Oh, you want to go through something like that? Yeah, let's, let's just go, no, just, just we'll just continue talking, it don't matter. You, you got us back on? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll continue on. Uh, now, as you, okay, now that um, you graduated now from high school, right? And you, you're running, pretty well running the business. The brothers are uh, in, the, in the military, right? Well, we, we, my brothers again, my, my, we were in Oregon, and we all enlisted along with several other fraternity brothers, and quite a few on the campus. And they had told us, it's called the Enlisted Reserve Corps, that's what it's reserve. called. And they said, okay, you enlist, and we won't call you out till June, which we thought was a good deal. That'll be at the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a uh, the osteo in my ankle, and I knew it. I uh, played ball in high school uh, and college, football it is. But I knew it, and we'd wrap it and all. And, but I said, gosh, I'm going in. I better get this fixed before I go. So in January, I, about between fall and winter term, I got it fixed. But they called us out in March, hmm. and I got a cast up to <laughs> up past my knee. Well, short of it is that, that I didn't go, they went. I w went to the draft center to, to, to uh, the physical, but they really report to Utah or uh, 
funny about the fourth thing. Go home, wait for the orders. And the orders were discharged. <laughs> but your intentions were there. Oh, intentions. Your intentions were there. So how did you get into politics? Let's talk about politics now. How did you get involved in politics? But what, what you, Bruce, what you really here asking, that would be active politics, public office. Public office. I was, I was interested in what the government was doing. I was really angry about what they were doing. I'd read the Kiplinger letter, I remember that so strongly. Kiplinger who had this, I forgot whether it's weekly or monthly, and he'd write about what's going on in Washington, D.C. And then you paid it for the service. So I remember one thing, some issue. He said, well, such and such is an issue, but nothing will happen this year. This, this is an election year. And I said, what? Yeah, well, what difference does that make? You're not going to do anything because this is an election year? If it's a problem, you deal with it. Well, that was sort of my who I was, and I would complain. And it's interesting how it all happened. I had a friend older than I was, and he had been to a meeting with the Moloma Central Committee, probably Republican Central Committee, and they were looking for candidates, which I find now is common. And somebody mentioned my name. He said, "Well, he's not Moloma County, Washington." So then he called me. Are you thinking about writing well, something? Why not now? I don't know why not now. So help me, Bruce. I had absolutely no idea that I would be involved in public collective office for 28 years. 28 years? 28 years. Wow. I had no idea at all. I just, you know. This was a two-year house, another two years, another two years, and that went to the Senate. And then when McCall finished his eight years, and I said, I can do this job. And I got, <laughs> well, I lost to Bob Strong, who was just a fine man. I, uh, and he won. It's the only race I ever lost. It was the general election. And then four years later, I ran and reversed. Uh, Bob was a good man, and uh, I actually was involved with this advisory committee when they were writing the book about it, and I was honored to do that. It's part of the civility. They asked me to be on their advisory committee, for the archives, mm -hmm. which was on uh, Western Oregon University. Not only that, but asked me to write the introduction to his book. Now, where do you find that today? Wow. You know, who, uh, your opponent is, is a bad guy. I mean, the worst you can find. There's that joke about the man wanted to find his, what his heritage was. And so he went to somebody and asked him, can you trace my heritage? Yes, he said, you've got about, about 3,000 numbers. Ooh, that's a lot. Can I do it cheaper? Yes. Run for office. <laughs> hey, you can find what's your heritage. Um, anyway, I, 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 I just, not for a moment. And, and, and I think that's where I was going to end as governor of Oregon. And I was, I was in a tough time. Do you remember? Yes. Unemployment was 12.6 percent. Inflation was going at 13 percent. Interest was 21 percent. I was talking to somebody not too long ago who was in that period of time as a young man. He bought a house. He thought he had a great deal. He got an interest of 18 percent. And he thought he had a good yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when you have all that unemployment and, and uh, those other things were right. But we got through it. And I had people working for it. 
you know I know that. In fact, I want to set the record straight for the rest of the folks out there too. I remember that I was trying to be very active, as you know, from politics and whatever. Yes. And uh, we had, to, and actually I had concern about diversity in the state and this, that, and the other, and, mm -hmm. and suggested that maybe one of the vehicles would be to run for office. And I think during that particular time, I ran. I think I yes. ran, and and, yes. uh, and you encouraged me to do that. Yes. And went around and encouraged me to go to the various meetings, if you will, when you were invited. And I can still remember going around the state. And I really appreciate that. And I want to I want to thank you for that opportunity because it gave me an opportunity to see Oregon in, in a different kind of a light that was respected. There was no problems, if you will. And, and then that, as a result of that, um, they really tried to get me involved in a number of things, but. It's like anything else, I, but I want to thank you for that because oh, you, you were the one that really helped me out and getting me involved in politics. Still is today. We are doing it right now. So, so thank you for that. And I want to, to be straight. Yes, it wasn't sir. running against you. You know that. Cause we talked about that, right? Yes, sir. Uh, now, tell me, um, you were the you were the last, probably, most prominent Republican that was ever elected to the state of Oregon uh, in, in any. Capacity as governor. What, what, what happened, Vic? What do you think? What happened to our party? I mean, what happened? To I our think folks? the. What do you think? Let me call them the right wing Republicans. Okay. The ardent, they're purer than you are kind of folks. But I told my friends who, let me call them moderate, these folks. I mean, we, I said, we've got to get on the stick mm -hmm. because these folks proved that the system works. Now, let me explain. They decided that, my God, I'm going to take charge of things. So they got precinct committee people, mm -hmm. elected their precinct committee mm -hmm. people, who elected their chairman, mm -hmm. who elected the state chairman. Mm -hmm. And so now they are calling the shots in terms of what the public reads about, they heard us badly. Probably the, the best identifiable one was when Dave Frohmeyer ran for governor. And Dave really would have won, but no, they had to put up an independent candidate. And that independent candidate made it possible for for our to lose. Mm -hmm. uh, people believe the Republicans, I'm a Republican. All Republicans uh, uh, are against abortion. All Republicans are against gays and lesbians, which is not true. Both of those subjects are not partisan. Democrats feel exactly the way Republicans do on them. But the Democrats are very clever, and so they pasted us. Republican, oh, well, that's what Republicans are. And uh, you know, we just never quite get on the stage to, to move ourselves. Now, Alan Alley is our chairman, and we are really moving center. And those that are way off on the right, begin to recognize the damage that they've done. So but gradually, we're moving back. And I feel it. I feel it in this past election recently and in the future. Um, so there, there needs to be a strong two-party. Sometimes the Republicans were in charge years ago. When I was governor then, the governor was a Republican, the Secretary of State Republican, the State Treasurer Republican, the Secretary of State Republican, and, and uh, now they're, it's not there at all. And so it's switched over to the Democrats. Um, but you ask me what? It's, it's sort of a short story. It's a short story on it, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about the diversity of this, in this you, know, you talked about it early on about but I but I also remember the time when you you acted upon it when you were governor. Uh, the, the the various commissions that you put together. In fact you initiated that whole piece about the uh, about the Black Commission on Black Affairs, the Hispanics, the I mean the whole nine yard aspect of it. 
And I think uh, Jackie was working for you during that particular time, and you she basically was. gave her that assignment, so to speak. Yes. And um, uh, what, what's your feel about that? What was your What was your feel about putting something like that together? Well, you felt that was a need to do that. Yeah. The tape reply. I met with that community and uh, the leaders, and they were mainly of uh, the churches. And during the course of the discussion, I said, now I really want to do something for the black community. I don't know, I don't know what it is, so I can't tell you I'm going to promise you this. I can't promise you, however, that I sincerely want to do something. And then I stopped and said, now I know you've heard this before <laughs> from other candidates. And I know that. Well, I mean, I can't prove anything. Mm -hmm. Well, out of it all, though, the one thing I believe strongly that there should not be a need for Commission on Blacks or Commission on Hispanics or Commission on right. Women or I honestly believe that. But there needs to be pressure to move us in that direction. And that's why I supported uh, the ones that you mentioned. So that's how it all happened. And I was pleased. It, I think I also started the Commission on Indian Services. The right. Indian right. I think that one and the others that I started, the Ways and Means gave us a few dollars. That, that legitimized, but they were given us a fishing mm -hmm. permit to go get some money. In other words, they didn't fund us. They said, yeah. now go get money. <laughs> That's how we started. But they soon learned that that was an important thing. So it's well integrated now. Well, you know, as, I, as you were doing this, and in fact, I, I think you even, uh, even, I was appointed to, I think I remember I was appointed, you appointed me to that first one. In fact, yeah. I spent some time on that. But I, but I also think about uh, the Republican Party as a whole from a historical standpoint. Lincoln, Republican, during that particular era, all of the, the diversity things that we had done during that particular era, but we're not taking credit for it today. What's the, what, what do you think? Why, why is that so? Is it because of the, the makeup I, of the party I, I today? I know for a positive fact, from my own personal knowledge, that and I'm speaking now generally, the Republicans are more sensitive to diversity than the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And when I say that to you, that's not now a partisan remark. I, rem I can remember comments and actions actually by Democrats in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Here again, I don't know, maybe they're more clever. That we're for the fat cats, we're for the rich, uh, we're not for the little guy. Bruce, as you remember, there was a burning of a cross of a black man while I was governor. And I was indignant about that. So I got to work in with uh, attorney, yep, in that case, this our attorney general was Dave Frommeyer and then Region 10 attorney and trying to figure out some way that we could com combat that kind of thing. And we finally came up with the bill that would make uh, racial and religious harassment a felony crime. So I introduced that and the started there. So the Democrats controlled, uh, as a matter of fact, they controlled my entire 28 years. Mm -hmm. But uh, I thought, well, this will go swishing right through. It was the next to the last bill passed before Sidey died, before they quit. And I had two, and I won't identify them. Right. Uh, they came in my office that night, I mean, these Democrats. And they wanted to make some changes. So they were saying, if you do that, And I said, no, I won't do that. And if you kill the bill, the whole world will know who did it. So they, finally, so they were 
pulling back using this as a hammer all the session. And I thought, but the Democrats are control. Surely it's against the racial religious harassment. Right. Well, that would be one I can identify for you, but there are many other mm -hmm. comments, mm -hmm. topics, discussions, and all that. And, yeah, you're right, you talk about Lincoln. I've been doing some reading, I've read oh. some books, uh, what he went through and how he first was not so sure. And uh, anyway, he finally did a gutsy thing for yeah. you, but he did. Mm -hmm. And uh, then as the years moved along, you know, we, we took, well, like we're downtrodden. It's, it's our, our fault where we let things happen that shouldn't have happened. We and I were talking about, oh, the guys are beating up on us. Well, I, I'm still optimistic. Uh, I think that it's, we, we need, we, it's our responsibility. Right. To let people know who we really are. Right, right. Would you like to reflect a little bit about the uh, our present uh, uh, political issue right now, which is the, which is the presidential election, if you will? Would you like to reflect on that? Whatever you want to say. What do you What do you think in terms of well, today? it's going to sound real partisan, but no problem. What, <laughs> How do you feel? Obama is uh, President Obama is not a mean man. He's not a bad man. He's just not a capable president. That doesn't mean that he ought to go shoot himself or anything. That doesn't mean that at all. He's just not a good president. We're in a much deeper problem, deeper problem and closer to rate of disaster uh, in the few years that he's been president. He's a marvelous speaker, but there's not much behind that. I worry about some of the old guard that are advising him, and maybe he would like to do something that he said he wanted to do. I don't know that. But he should not be president again. Uh, Romney, I'm confident and feel good about. Uh, I can't say I'm wild, but that we have choices to make. Choices from the Obama. We don't have any other choice. And I think we need a person like Romney who's been in business, has experience, has been in government. Uh, see, Obama was just a congressman for one or two terms. I don't remember now when he became president of the United States. So he had really very little personal. Uh, education of all kinds of things. So I think I think Romney, if we put them down and say, okay, we're going to hire somebody. Here, here's my qualification. If you're going to hire him, you'd hire Romney. That's where I'm coming. So I hope it happens. I think it's a good. I, I, I worry about the country. It doesn't happen. I remember uh, that on that same note. Many folks were excited about the fact that an African American was elected uh, uh, president of these United States, which was a first. And in all due respect, I I felt good about it. But and then I'd been very much involved in politics and, and felt good about it. And that he was running against uh, uh, Senator McCain at the time, and I just happened to have met uh, Senator McCain uh, during that particular time. And uh, that to being a, a war hero, and, and you know, and and, and, uh, and whatever. And, I can remember talking to him about the fact that he should reinstitute the draft because that's how I came here, remember? And it really got a lot of the young folks the yeah. opportunity to get out of the situation and get in a more positive light. But anyway, not to, you, not to do that. But the thing that I remembered that I that was really, I really felt good about it during that particular time, when the whole issue of race in one of his debates and one of his talks tried to raise his head. Remember the lady tried to bring up some issue about race or whatever, and he said he would not tolerate that. Remember? I really respected him for that, that aspect of it. And I guess, um, uh, naturally, it, it is an issue to date that's, as you say, as, as I listen to you about the business aspect of it, you're right, uh, you need someone in business. It's, a, it's unfortunately that um, uh, uh, it's still, as a businessman, 
he still has to reflect the fact he's got to get he's looking at the bottom line so to speak and and as i look at this piece I, I, but most of us don't understand that, you know, the, the race has a more relevancy, if you will, in terms of the media. A lot of times there's nothing for folks there like yourself to educate folks about what it is. It's not about race right now. It's about the bottom line, getting people to work. Yeah. And he is a good man, as far as I'm concerned, but the experience yeah. is something that is an issue. Yeah, there's a, yeah, had we mentioned earlier, the people have the idea this is the enemy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The opponent is yeah. the enemy, yeah. not the enemy. He be just let's be logical about it. Has he done a good job? Let's be right about it. Are things better for you than they yeah, were so they, yeah. three yeah. years ago? No. Um, does uh, Romney have more experience, background, knowledge? Yeah. You know, it, instead of feeling that the that they're like, this person is a mean person, and he's a, you know, Obama's a, a good man, he's just not a capable president. So, that's the way it is. And so that when I come down, I wasn't merely uh, being partisan, because I'm, well, you know, yes. I'm probably less partisan than most people. <laughs> uh, so that's the way I see it. I didn't pay much attention to the convention. I listened in a little bit, but not much. I've been to four conventions, and uh, that's, that's two more than I really wanted. <laughs> I missed the one. I did the one. <laughs> uh, and so I understand what goes on and yeah. what this decided to do. Now the Democrats will have their chance to take a shot at Republicans. I understand that too. And uh, some, what was it? Some news people were talking about the, the convention system and our system of electing president. And about the subject, the title that was, somehow it works. We don't really know why, but it somehow works. <laughs> somehow it works. No, that's, uh, that's, that's why it is. That's somehow it works. Well, I tell you, I enjoyed talking with you. It's been uh, great. And uh, we've done this before. Yes. And we've been old friends for a long time. Yes, we have. And when you called, I just had <laughs> talked to you. This is not what you can cut this off, but you yes. said you saw a okay. uh, 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 Bernard Palmer. Yeah. Yeah, Bernard. She, yeah, she, she her sends her regards, by the way. She was I, the, I saw her on the, the street. I saw her on the street. Yes, yes. And uh, she, she, what, tell me about her. Yeah, that's um, is she working or what's she? Actually, she, I met her the other day, because as you know, this is not on the, you can that off. You can get it off now. Uh, okay. Here recording. Okay. You, know, you know, Vic, I, I was thinking uh, before we close this situation, I'd like for you, you, you made mention about the fact that maybe one of the highlights that, uh, uh, that you were involved with with Jackie Winters, who basically yes. worked. She's now Senator Winters. Yes, you know, she's yes. still still active, so to speak. Absolutely. But you remembered something that you felt uh, well, that should it, be said. Well, it's, it's interesting. Uh, that Jackie uh, was uh, the one that actually started uh, what we now have as a food bank. Really? And uh, we call it Oregon Food Share. And this is when uh, Congress had passed a bill and, uh, and the food stamps were worthless and people called and were she was our citizen representative, mm -hmm. and they're hungry. Jackie, we got to do something. We can't just wait for Congress to correct this. And so I get credit for it. She's the one that did it. Wow. And I keep saying that, and, but I don't feel too bad about it. When I say that, I get credit for something I didn't do. <laughs> but she was working for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Okay. It just worked for you. It comes out even. But Jackie yeah, yeah. knows, and I made it as publicly as I can make it. Yeah. And uh, but she's one of my success stories. Wow. And the other one is Kate Turan, who Kate, worked yes. for me, and now she's the head of uh, the Volunteers of America. Right, right. And she's proven to people that she deserves to do the job in the wow. governor's office that she's doing now. Those are the joys that you get. Wow, the things wow, that happen wow, wow. are joys. And thank you for me, too, by the way, oh, okay. for putting the Oregon Voters Digest together and support it. <laughs> All right.
Well, look, on that particular note, we want to thank you. Governor, thank you very much. You're welcome. We really appreciate that. Tell Dolores I said hi. Give, I will. Give her a hug for me. I will And maybe at some point in time, I might be able to pick you up and show you enormous kitchen. Okay. Got a little, got a little, okay. We got a kitchen up there. We serve oh. some nice meals up All there. All right. Okay. Beach, okay? Yes. But then, thank you very much. And again, we, it's been a pleasure um, interviewing the governor and and hopefully all of you will watch it. If you do watch it, you can watch it on YouTube, if you will. And I'm going to put that piece on, and, and you can send it to your friends and whatever. It's very, very important. Again, thank you very much. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host of the Oregon Voters Digest. Governor, thanks again. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome again. Welcome back, if you will, folks. I, I hope you enjoyed that interview with, uh, with former Governor Vic Atia. I mean, I was very excited about the fact that he allowed us to do that, and uh, I really appreciate that. Again, thank you very much, Governor, for doing that with us. I'm sure that uh, Oregonians will appreciate it if given the opportunity to watch it. Uh, again, someone that uh, uh, that Oregon respects quite a bit, and he just happened to have been a Republican. In fact, the, the last prominent Republican that, is, that has been here and uh, that's been elected to office here in the state of Oregon. But anyway, but anyway, now that uh, we've got this, we've got about 10 minutes, and so what I thought maybe we'd do is that we'd reflect uh, some of, the, some of the things that uh, the governor said and, and sort of bring it up to present, if you will, because you know, as you know, we've got this campaign going on at this point in time, and, uh, and I thought we could do this real well with, uh, with two, two individuals that I know that are very active in the Republican Party, uh, good folks, uh, very, very involved, et cetera, and I'm talking about Dale and Sarah Seal, and they're sitting here with me. Well, what do you think? Why don't we start off with Sarah first? We want to respect that. Sarah, what do you think about the, the, the interview with the governor? Oh, I think that you must be cherished as a friend and respected by the governor because you told me that that's the last interview he's doing. So you're the so. big fireworks celebration, the big going out with a bang here as far as interviews go, Bruce. So it's very much of an honor to be included on the tail end of this. Well, you know, in all due respect, I wish that he would have a number, a few more interviews, if you will. Yes. It's so important, especially now during this time, the transition between mm -hmm. his time in office and how he feels about things and, and, and where we are today. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's some other things he would love to have said. I, we just mm -hmm. did an hour, as he indicated. He, we could have spent three or four hours. You know, mm -hmm. So in the bottom line, he's, he, I think he's still available. If, if given the right depth. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, good, you work good, that good, on it, Bruce. Good, good, good. So, so what, what do you think? Uh, let, let's bring it up to date now. Let's talk about some of your quick activities now. You know, we, we are running for, uh, there's another presidential election at this point mm -hmm. in time. And well, what are the SEALs doing now? I understand you're precinct committee persons, right? Mm -hmm. People, right? Yes, that's correct. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so what are you doing? What, what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the platform today? The platform is um, just kind of the bread and butter of it is is pretty much along the same lines of what it's been these last decades not really altered that much there aren't going to be any big shifts so the continuity is good um, the republican party platform is a platform of values of family values it, it isn't like the governor said um like Frommeyer versus mobley yeah mobley was kind of a you know a maybe a purist back in the day when he ran uh, as a third party candidate against Fro Dave Frohmeyer and that was an unfortunate situation what, but the governor said something about well those right wingers were against lesbians and gays or <laughs> and that's not that, there's not, nothing recognizable about that now because because um, the Republican Party is a party of the people that includes everybody what the, what the party platform does is 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 reinstating the value of our traditions, which marriage is an important foundation of a stable civil society. And uh, that is a man and a woman to be able to raise children. So that's in the platform. It doesn't, but it doesn't even touch on, well, we don't like this person or that person. It touches, it talks about the institution mm -hmm. and to hold on to the solidity of that. Because we need this framework for America to not fall apart, to not fragment, and and the other part of it is um, abortion. 
Um, the Republican Party is pro-life. Uh, they're, they're, the Democrats have been making a big deal about um, uh, about the gov the congressman. We got about two minutes. I want to yeah, make sure yeah. we get Dale right, involved right. in this process real quickly. Yeah, in Missouri, Todd Aiken and saying, "Well, look at him; he's against women." And so that thing is exactly blown up out of out of proportion. He said a stupid thing. They capitalized on it, as smart political people do. The party platform is a pro-life platform where that where human life is valued. Here is the Constitution. The Constitution. The Constitution says that. Um, and the Declaration talks about life. The reason for a Republican form of government, the United States of America is a republic, is to protect life. Okay. And well, um, that's why we're alive. All right, alive. well, let's get Dale in. But before I do that, I will ask the question at the same time. Well, in regards to the gentleman who made the statement in regards to women, the rape situation, Yeah. Uh, I guess Governor Romney and others, had been a prominent Republican, had suggested that he get out of the race. What do you think? Yeah, I think. I think that uh, if, if we were to sit back objectively and say what would be probably the better of the options, it would be mm -hmm. to get out, but I'm not in his situation, and I know the media tip typically hyper ice, you know, hyper politicizes anything that Republicans say, and they ignore the good things they say, but but back to the interview, Bruce, right, um, I really appreciated what Victor, Victor Atia said about about people coming to America. They, they're not trying to flee to socialist countries. They're not trying to, to sneak into China or Cuba. And what they, I believe, Bruce, what they, what they value more than anything else is liberty. And that would be economic freedom, which does lead to prosperity. And we want Oregon to be prosperous. We want America to be prosperous. And, I, we, and, and the only way that can happen is people have freedom. And, and Vic mentioned about starting jobs, you know, starting a career, starting a business. We have three sons that we would like them to have a future in Oregon. So therefore, we, we want to do things that enhance that and to bring prosperity to Oregon. Okay. Well, look, I, I wish we had more time. I think we got about another minute or so. Is that right, guys? I think we got about another minute at least. But, but again, uh, we, we've, got, we've got some discussions that are on the table. And, and uh, as you note, uh, the issue of race is still out there as a result of mm -hmm. the fact that we happen to have the first African-American that was uh, that's, that's as presently as president of the United States. And I think that's that's good in many ways because we're having discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it looked like we've run out of time, but i got to have you all back here again. Mm -hmm. Again, thanks for coming. Thank and you. And again, I appreciate all of you out there. Again, thanks for very much for being a part of us. And tell your friends to watch the show, okay? Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, Oregon Voters Digest. And as George Page always said, back to what you believe in. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye.